Yeah. Uh, hello and uh, hello everyone and good afternoon. Uh, I would want to welcome you to the today's session of uh, PRP for endometrium brought to you by Apollo Fertility. Uh, uh, today to speak on this topic, I would like to welcome Dr. Alikya Reddy. She's from Brookfield, Bangalore, and she's an in-house uh, fertility consultant. To give a brief background about our, doc our speaker doctor today, uh, sorry, I would want to just correct myself. She's from Banjara Hills, Hyderabad, and not, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry for that. To, uh, to give a brief background about her qualification, I mean, uh, she's done her OBS in Gaini and done her fellowship in infertility and master's training in reproductive medicine from uh, Homerton, Homerton Town University, London. She's an in house fertility consultant, a very well experienced doctor and well known in this uh, field. We welcome you, doctor, to the today's session. Uh, please, we are looking forward to hear from you because this is the most important aspect of holding or of holding to any pregnancy. So endometrium plays a very important role. So we are looking forward to hear from you on this. My uh, Hi, one and all. This is Dr. Ali Karedi from Apollo Fertility Banjara in Sagdabad. Uh, today, we're going to speak on the topic PRP in endometrium. PRP is a platelet, uh, platelet rich plasma which we are using to increase the endometrium layer. As uh, we all know, endometrium plays a major role. It is one of the main factors in uh, conceiving, in achieving the pregnancies. So, uh, especially in ART cycles, when we don't achieve the right, um, right uh, amount of endometrium, uh, we do use this. But let's just talk about endometrium first. So, on a day 2, day 3, uh, the endometrium is usually very uh, less. It is only 2 to 3 mm because of the shedding of the endometrium or shedding of the layer because of the menstruation. So, in the mid-cycle from day 10 or day 12 onwards, the endometrium needs to increase in size. The best endometrium which we feel is supposed to be a good triple line uh, of 7.5 to 8 mm and more would be a good endometrium for a fertility specialist. Uh, some people have a cutoff of 7 mm, some people have a cutoff of 8 mm. In our, um, uh, in our region, in our uh, fertility center, we usually consider 8 mm and more in a good triple line to be a good endometrium. All right. So, uh, okay. So, when do we say the endometrium is not good enough? Either if the triple line is not seen, if it's ecogenic, that is uh, the haziness is present, or if the layer is uh, less than uh, 7 mm, then we consider it not to be uh, good and uh, we need to get the achievable measurement by whatever medicines. So before PRP, what are the medication we usually use to achieve the endometrium? So most common uh, uh, medication which we use is the estrogen. Uh, the most common estradiol, which uh, mainly comes in uh, commercial name as Proveinova, a 2MG tablet, which we give in various uh, dosages starting from at least twice a day or thrice a day. Uh, and we do add the adjuvants, uh, for example, like aspirin, or we can add between E, we can add uh, adjutus. All these uh, do uh, help us in increase the endometrium. There are also a few certain drugs uh, like uh, sildenafil tablets which can be kept vaginally uh, to improve the endometrium. And uh, there is something known as GCSF that is a granulocyte colony stimulation uh, factor. Uh, it comes in the injection form which can be given subcutaneously and some people do use it intrauterine also to improve the endometrium layer. Now these are only the estrogen or the adjuvants. Uh, some people do use the uh, protocol that is the ovulation induction protocol in uh, order to enhance the follicle size and as the follicle size increases the endometrium catches up accordingly so when the follicle is increasing the endometrium so in that you can use a uh, normal medication like either uh, what we use for ovulation induction like leprose or clomiphene or sometimes you can even add uh, gonadotrophins uh, all these if any of these doesn't work and none of the medication worked and we really have to prepare the endometrium for an embryo transfer especially frozen embryo transfer because in IVF cycle because of various injections uh, we usually get a good endometrium but even if we didn't get it that time then the role of PRP plays a major role yeah what is the mechanism of action of PRP it it is uh, it, it has high concentration of growth factors 
uh, tissue generating and then also it generates the tissue healthy. Then it has a fibrin framework which supposedly regenerated last week. A rapid establishment of the endometrium takes place. And uh, how do we do it? So PRP, uh, usually uh, we take the uh, blood sample from the vein. Uh, collection is around uh, 30 to 34 ml, you, you can say. Almost 8.5 ml in each wire, four tubes are formed. The whole blood is collected, the whole blood is collected in the anticoagulated uh, vac vaccinator uh, tubes. Uh, in the first pin, the centrifuge is around 1200 RPM per, for 12 minutes. Then the upper layer forms the uh, platelet in WBC, the intermediate layer is rich in uh, WBC and the bottom layer is rich in the RBC. Now the uppermost layer along with the buffer coat is taken into empty sterile tubes. Again, the second spin of around 3300 RPM for 7 minutes is kept. Now 5 ml of homogeneous PRP in each container is stored. Uh, how does it have help? It helps in platelet activation which triggers the release of growth factor which in turn uh, increases the release of thrombin, collagen or calcium chloride which in turn helps in increasing the endometrium layer. Now these, this is the mechanism how you can uh, achieve the PRP. Now how do you induce it in, or inseminate it in a human body? Uh, basically, we call the patient on a day to day three. Now, depending if you want to do just a natural cycle or you want to do a estrogen induced cycle. So, we call the patient on a day to day three, check the endometrium if there is no cyst. We call the patient on day five. Basically, after day five or day six. So, once the periods have stopped for the patient, we take the intravenous blood. We take the blood of uh, at the same time. Uh, and on the same day, the, it is centrifuge. So one sample we're gonna uh, induce, uh, one sample we're gonna inseminate on the same day, that is a fresh sample. And the other two to three vials, which they give us because it, they centrifuge it, they form the plasma, uh, platelet rich plasma on the same day. Rest of the tubes are uh, stored. Uh, you can store it either in the, uh, uh, you need to freeze the sample so you can use the nitrogen oxide or you can also store it in normal fridge in minus 2 degrees Celsius. Uh, those, uh, the temperature and all will be uh, told to you. So the first sample is inseminated and how do we inseminate the sample? It is as simple as IUI. Uh, the patient is in lithotomy position in aseptic conditions, uh, in totally sterile conditions. Uh, we take the catheter. It could be as simple as a sun catheter or any catheter which you use for IUI and under ultrasound guidance so that you know the uh, tube is passing through the vagina into the cervix and it's inside the uh, endometrium layer uh, we uh, instill uh, the PRP so on as we are doing the first sample on a day 5 day 6 or it could be day 6 day 7 depending on how long the patient menstruates for so we usually believe after two three days of the cessation of the menstruation, we're supposed to take the blood and then inseminate it. So the first sample goes like that. Uh, the second sample will be after three to four days of the first sample. Uh, sorry. And then, uh, yeah. uh, and then we check the endometrium layer after the two uh, two samples and then decide on the third sample when to be given because the third sample uh, people can use fourth sample also but most of the times in our center we've been using only three samples the third sample is given two days prior to the endometrium transfer so once we feed the endometrium is of good side and we are starting the progesterone and other adjuvants uh, then we call the patient two days prior to the endometrium transfer and then insert it some people do insert it on the same day in the morning also like if they have the endometrium transfer in the afternoon, we're doing it in the morning. But we usually did it like a day, a day, a day or two prior, and it has fetched us good results. Uh, yeah. And how much amount to be used in the IU catheter? It's going to be only 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 ml. Uh, we usually find it. It is very innovative. It is helpful. It is therapeutic. It is affordable. It's very simple and uh, it's easily available so and then we have done uh, 
um, and we have done a few cycles which I wanted to put in front of you where we were not getting the endometrium at all using any of the medication. Uh, so out of, uh, if retrospectively I talk about the 10 patients which we had done in past three months, um, we could achieve out of 10, at least seven of them had got good endometrium more than 8 ml and the others had got around, seven, the other three had got around 7.5. And uh, out of 10, almost six to seven people conceived on the whole. And uh, the other three uh, they didn't conceive. I'm talking about both uh, 7.5 and 8. The other three didn't conceive. The ones uh, who conceived, so far the, uh, uh, the pregnancy is going well. We need to still study further that how much is the life birth rate. But uh, as we think the good endometrium lining uh, a good triple line is directly proportionate uh, to uh, for achieving the pregnancy as it can hold the embryos. Um, so far, we got uh, good results in it, and we further would like to continue the treatment only if needed. Um, you can also ask me any further questions if you want. Yeah, many of you asked me the role of hysteroscopy also in endometrium if we don't want to do um, so. Uh, the role of hysteroscopy, I would say, first of all, if there is any pathological condition, if there is any endometrial polyp, then for sure we go for it. If the endometrium is ecogenic and we just can't get the real uh, clear triple line, then also it helps us. Uh, in some uh, patients, uh, because uh, when we go inside the hysteroscopy and we are scraping the layer, the blood circulation also increases. Uh, thereafter, the endometrium line also increases. So in polyp, there is a clear indication that you need to remove it. If it's ecogenic, clear indication. If uh, she has any additions, then it's a clear indication of going ahead. If uh, there is any myoma, which can be removed via a hysteroscopic uh, myomectomy, then we must go for it. Um, and um, of course, in uh, patients with uh, thin ET, it does improve because of the blood circulation and in in return, the circulation increases and then causes the increase. Um, diet doesn't really play a major role in uh, thickening of the endometrium. Uh, we would basically see just a healthy diet, uh, more of greens, less of oily food, less of fatty food which balances the hormones so in turn the estrogen and progesterone level are in control uh, that can help you in developing the endometrium but majorly there is no particular diet to increase the endometrium and then uh, a few of you had asked me if we can use this method for even IUI so now again that is very subjective because uh, of the expenses because IUI is much it is less expensive than PRP itself because right now, not every um, center can create its own plasma rich plasma, uh, platelet rich plasma. They usually hire people from outside, they outsource the PRP. So uh, it becomes a little expensive. So, in case of IUI, we must try with uh, our regular injections and um, even GCSF, you can try it um, subcutaneous or intrauterine. And still, if you are unable to achieve it, then you might uh, undergo. Uh, yeah. uh, do we need to take right so do we need to take rest during PRP no not at all it's the same day uh, it's just a 10 minute procedure uh, maybe on the first day when they are collecting the blood and they're going to form the uh, PRP it takes a while you need to stay a little longer in the clinic otherwise um, yeah it's a very small duration you come we inseminate it, we do the scan, so in like 10-15 minutes you are done and then, then you only after PRP we uh, ask the patient to take rest as immobilization can help uh, for the materials to stay within for a longer time. So that's it, you don't need any rest, you are going to do your routine work, you can get back to work and you can do your routine stuff, there is no restrictions on that. And uh, another question is... Uh, can we use PRP while conceiving naturally? Uh, why not? You can, but then again, it is the uh, it is the cost factor. But then, if you think that naturally, if you are ovulating and your endometrium is not coming, 
then you can you can try not a problem not a problem at all and someone was asking with ivf if you have thin et or most of the time then what do you do so in ivf the advantage is anyways we are retrieving the oocytes and we are found found forming the embryos outside and we're going to freeze the embryos so we do have time we can try the endometrium uh, development with the estrogen or with other certain medication as i've mentioned before with the adjuvants or with the uh, ovulation induction protocol and if you still don't find it if you still don't uh, get the required endometrium then we can go for prp and then uh, plan the embryo transfer so in IVF it really works out very well uh, in the same cycle. Yes, PRP done, is done in the same cycle. Yeah. So it was a short topic. Uh, we don't have much to say about it, but then I really wanted to put forward uh, the um, studies uh, which uh, have been done abroad also, which uh, do encourage PRP. And now that we have person experience and we've been doing in our own uh, clinic and center i think uh, it's really useful we must try and uh, there are a few uh, pharmaceutical companies who are encouraging who are getting us the uh, sample prepared also so if you think the in-house prp is not working for you you can always outsource it uh, get the best of it because it's helping the patients and uh, because if you don't get a good endometrium endometrium is like a soil for the plant as you need this the soil is so important for the roots to be strong and the plant to grow same way endometrium is one of the major factor for pregnancy so uh, why not invest on this because it's totally worth it okay and if you have any other queries further you can ask us in the questions uh, section below we'll definitely get back to you thank you